Now I know what you're thinking. Miles, why can't we just talk about the coolest, hippest new architecture that I can try to use on the job yet? And the thing is, we've talked about coupling, we've talked about cohesion, we've talked about modularity, and the conversation would not be complete if we didn't cover this topic, which is connaissance. Say it with me, connaissance. What a weird pronunciation of that word. And I double checked, that is how it's pronounced, connaissance. All right, let's get into it. All right, so what is connaissance? Let's break down the word. So we've got con, the prefix, which means with or together, right? And then we've got nascent, which means coming into life or being born. So con nascent means things that are being born together or coming up together. And in the programming sense, it's basically um, used to describe two components where a change to one of them would require a change to the other in order to um, maintain the correctness of the system. That is the definition that Meyer Page Jones put forth um, when uh, he investigated coupling that Jim Weirich uh, took forward um, in, in his description of a more modern concept of, of connaissance. Now, the reason you should be excited about connaissance is because it gives us a really measurable, objective way to know what to refactor first, how to prioritize refactoring, um, code. And that is extremely powerful in a world where often it's hard to know what should be refactored. Um, it tells us a ton about the system in terms of the coupling. It tells us what is most likely to break if we change something. So this is very, very important and useful information. We're going to break connaissance into two different types, static and dynamic. Static is going to be source code level coupling. That is um, things that can be discovered by static code analysis. Now, dynamic connaissance is going to be at execution time coupling, okay? So that's going to be um, not discoverable by static code analysis. Static connaissance includes connaissance of the name, so two components must agree on the name, of the type, they must agree on the type, um, of the meaning, so th this would be um, for example, like magic numbers would be an example of connaissance of meaning, uh, where you have like a number that's defined in your code rather than pulling it in as an environment variable, which is something we always look for when we're trying to um, refactor and make better code. That's an, that's an easy type of coupling you can get out of your code. Um, and then uh, connaissance of position. So like what order are the parameters coming into the function? Do, it, do compo multiple components rely on that? Um, and then you can have connaissance of um, algorithm. So are they relying on the same algorithm? Is there some implied coupling through the use of a given algorithm? So in dynamic connaissance, we have the um, execution. So if the order of execution matters, um, things are said to be dynamically connaissant. For example, in express middleware, where the order of that middleware can matter, you may see that as a JavaScript developer. Um, then you get into connaissance of timing, um, which, for example, can result in a race condition if your um, components are relying on the timing of certain events happening. Then there's connaissance of values. So when the values depend on each other, for example, um, if you're doing some kind of uh, distributed database and you're relying on the same value being in all of those databases, um, can you rely on that actually being the case? Um, or if you're doing some math and you're updating some value that's shared across something, um, you know, this, for example, could happen in JavaScript where you have some variable that you're changing the, the value of that and it's getting referenced in different places. If you're relying on that, then you've got some dynamic connaissance issue. Um, and then finally, identity, um, which similarly would be if multiple components are um, relying on the same entity. I think it's really important to break dynamic connaissance into um, synchronous versus asynchronous calls. So when we think of a synchronous call between two components, the first component is waiting for the response um, from the other before it can continue. This creates a dynamic connaissance that um, means that those two systems, um, component A and component B, um, must have roughly the same architectural characteristics because if they don't, then imagine that 
um, one is putting out a bunch of calls and the other is not as scalable and it can't scale up to meet that demand and you start getting timeouts and your system starts breaking down, which is why typically um, we like to refactor those examples of synchronous connaissance into asynchronous connaissance or the fire and forget paradigm. This is where um, the, uh, the component that's making the call can make that call. It fires and it forgets. And then, for example, that may go into some queue and it, um, it gets taken up by um, the other component as it's able to, which means that they are not, their architectural characteristics are not coupled in the same way. So that's a, that's a really interesting kind of um, feature of dy dynamic connaissance. So if you go back to our discussion about modularity, um, you can see how connaissance is something you may want to minimize across component boundaries but that within a component, it actually makes for a really nice module. So um, we can define the architectural quantum um, as a component that is highly coupled, meaning it has high cohesion. So you can go and see my video on cohesion. Um, and it, so it has high cohesion and it has um, a high dynamic connaissance within that component, um, synchronous dynamic con connaissance. Um, within that component, um, this means that it can be deployed independently and with its own architectural characteristics. We just don't want that to be coupled to other architectural quanta in such a way that makes them actually one architectural quantum because that coupling is so high. So when you start to get into distributed systems, it's important to think of your, your components in terms of um, the coupling within that bounded context um, so that you know that when you deploy it, and it may have different architectural characteristics, um, it'll still fulfill the duties of the system uh, requirements. Now, if you're like me, this whole idea of the architectural quantum makes you start to think, wait, are all of the systems I've built a single architectural quantum because they're all coupled through a single data source? And the answer is that if you're using a single database, the answer is yes, you've been working with a single architectural quantum your entire career. Um, if you're working with distributed data um, in a microservices environment, for example, um, then you're going to have a system of multiple architectural quanta, which um, you know kind of opens up a whole world for you.